title today is why do I need to know it's on the board too why do I need to know and use mental math strategy let's talk about this word mental what does mental mean mental math what does the word mental mean anybody know what mental means mental math Ashlyn? Not easy math. It could be if you get really good at mental math, but not always. Lily Marie? Yeah, mental just means in your brain. So when you are doing mental math, the only thing you're using is your brain. You don't have any paper, you don't have any pencils, you don't have any counters. It's just math you can do just using your brain. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. Why would I need to know how to do math in my brain? Why would that be helpful? Well, you're facing the wrong direction. Why would I need to know how to do math in my brain? Bria, what do you think? Um, that way it can help you um solve solve um other math problems. Yeah. So a lot of times, big math problems have little parts to them. If you can solve the little parts in your head, then you can put them all together to solve the bigger math problems. Definitely. Billy, why else would I need to know how to do math in my brain? Um, because sometimes um, you, might have, you might have a quiz on doing math in your head. Maybe. Maybe. Not very often, but maybe. Kylie? Um, it says uh, you don't have any problems in just somebody wants you to figure it out, uh, figure out what the, the math is doing. Sure, so sometimes you'll be in places where you don't have any supplies. For instance, if you go to the grocery store, maybe you're going to try and add up how much money all these groceries are going to cost you, and you don't have any paper or pencils. You can start using those mental math strategies to help you solve that problem. Asha? Well, will it help you to figure out how, like, um, any strategy that helps you solve the big one? So you can just solve it in your head. Yes. This is a lot of taking big problems and breaking them down into little pieces that are easy for our brain. Mental math strategies are all about what is easy for your brain. So if we're talking about mental math, we are talking about things that are easy for my brain. Not what's easy for someone else's brain, but what is easy for your brain. Some of you will find that you like one strategy over another. And that's totally fine. It's whatever makes your brain happy. I will tell you a lot of these mental math strategies we learned today are review. You've learned them before. You learned them in second grade. You actually learned them in first grade. It's not going to be anything super, super new. Okay? Where am I up? The first mental math strategy we're going to talk about, doubles. So underneath your main title, I want you to write doubles. What does the word doubles mean? We've definitely talked about doubles. We did it when we were doing multiplication. William, what is doubles? Not three things, just, just two things. It's important to know your doubles because it helps you then solve bigger things. Like multiplication, doubles just means two times. So if you are doing something doubled, you're doing it twice. You're doing it two times. Here are all the doubles you need to know. Maybe. Ah, there they are. Here's the first one. First set, I should say. So we have one plus one. What is one plus one? Two. Two. Go ahead and start.
start writing these equations because you have to know these. What is 2 plus 2? Two? 4. Four. you notice, Lainey, what is that pattern that you notice? That in the answer, the hey, if we're doing doubles, are we also multiplying by two? Yes. yes. So if I said two times two, I'm still going to get the same answer as if I said two plus two. Yeah, that does look a little familiar since we've done some multiplication. Ashlyn? It's it's all about pattern. All about pattern. Yep, doubles, you really need to know these patterns. So if you struggled with 7 plus 7 and 8 plus 8 and 9 plus 9, practice them. We need to know those materials. Kate, if you color on the eraser, it won't erase anymore. How can I use my doubles to help me? Can you think of a time when knowing my doubles would help me in mental math? Ashlyn? Because it's like adding little numbers, so you can, like, for example, you can do like 7 plus 7, you know, that's 14, but you want to solve it, it's just 8, you don't know that, you can just add two more. Good, so maybe I can start adding on, using as a counting on strategy. I like it. Dorian, how else could you use doubles to help you? So mental math can help us just solve things faster. You could have to count every single card or every single toy, but if you start putting things in groups, remember our brain likes groups, then we can add them a lot faster. Billy, how else could I use doubles to help me on mental math? man, all the bonus points go to you. So what Billy said is, oh yeah, I remember when we did multiplication, we broke apart our four into two and two because maybe we weren't so good at our fours. So now I have a mini multiplication of two times six plus another two times six. Billy knows two times six is six plus six, aka 12, plus another 12, gives him a total of 24. We can use doubles a lot in our multiplication. Remember, if I'm writing, you're writing. So if you're sitting there playing in your desk, that's a problem. Sit up. All right, next up, we have doubles plus one. I know you've heard of this strategy before. What is doubles plus one? If you haven't heard of doubles plus one, think about it. It's exactly what it sounds like. What would be doubles plus one? Barrett? Yes, we're literally doing a double, and then we're adding one more. Doubling is easy, and counting by one is easy, so now we're combining those two strategies together. So doubles plus one is your new subtitle. If you need to turn the page in your notebook, that's okay. So we are going to... We're going to 
bevel. And then add one. Exactly what it sounds like. So an example of this is eight plus nine. Eight plus nine might be hard on my own, so I'm gonna break apart my nine. What could I break apart my nine in to give me a double? I want a double. Look at what my other part of my equation is. Ooh. Aiden, is that gonna give me a double with eight? No, what could I break nine in to give me a double with eight? Okay, what do you think? Eight and one. Does eight plus one make nine? Yes. Yes. Make sure you're writing with me. Now I have my double. What is eight plus eight? Sixteen. Eight plus eight is sixteen. Then I have my leftover. Sixteen plus one. I know, hard math. Is seventeen. So what is eight plus nine? Seventeen. That would be doubles plus one. Yes. That is the same strategy. What is easy for you is not easy for everyone. So be aware of that. This is how it looks in math language. A lot of you do doubles and one, doubles plus one in your head. This is actually what it looks like in math language. All right, let's do another one. Six plus seven. 6 plus 7. Which number am I going to break apart so I can get doubles? Lainey? 7. What am I going to break it into? 6 and 1. So 6 and 1 added together gives me 7. Now I'm going to do my doubles. What is 6 plus 6? That's a doubles that we should know. Kylie? 12 and 12 plus 1. Oh, yikes. 13. 13. Does that make sense? I know some of this is really easy because we're just doing one digit numbers. We're going to get to bigger numbers. Much bigger numbers. Not just two digit. We're going to be doing the same strategies with three digit numbers. So if you're thinking, wow, Miss Miller, this is so easy. I know. I need you to make sure you can do it with one digits before I start throwing gigantic numbers at you. All right, try this one in your notebook by yourself, and then we're going to go over it. There it is. Five plus six. I, even if you know it off the top of your head because you use this strategy in your brain, set it up like this because it'll help a lot when we start getting to some bigger numbers. Which number am I going to break up to form a double, Thomas? Six. six. And what am I breaking my six into? Five. five and one, because we know five and one gives me six. I'm going to do my double. Five plus five. Five plus five is what, Thomas? You're still on a roll. Ten. Ten plus one, Thomas. Oh, friend. Ten plus one. Oh man, he's having a brain fart. Aiden? Eleven. I know you know that, Thomas. Your brain just went blank. Some of you are really good at your doubles, and this is your go-to strategy. My brain does not go to doubles. I can make it do that, but that's not what it likes to do. My brain really likes the next strategy. I have found in third graders you're either a double fan or my next strategy fan. Some of you could do both all the time, and that's really cool. That's not really my brain, but that's okay. I understand how doubles and doubles plus one work, but it's not my go-to strategy. My go-to oh. strategy is make a 10. Oh. Because for me, making a 10 is really, really easy. So our next strategy we're going to talk about, our next subtitle, if it needs to be the next page, that's okay, is make a 10. Look in the book. That's fine. Make a 10 is a great strategy because 10s are usually really easy for us to add in our head. So if we can rearrange the equation to make a 10, it's usually 
a lot easier for us to add. Underneath make a 10, make sure you have that little sentence that I wrote. And then we're going to solve this equation using the make a 10 strategy. So the goal of the make a 10 strategy is to break up numbers to make a 10. So the way I'm going to do that is I see that I have 8 and I have 3. In my head, I'm already thinking, oh, 8 is really close to 10. It's only 2 away. So I need to find 2 somewhere in my other equation so that I can make a 10. I know there is a 2 hiding inside that 3. I'm going to break apart my 3 to be a 2 and then a 1. So from here, now I have my missing 2. I can use it with my 8, and now I have 10. Then I can just add whatever numbers are left over, which in this case is just 1. 10 plus 1, I can do that easy peasy. Yeah. 10 plus 1 is 11. Yep. It is similar to doubles, we're breaking apart, but I'm not breaking apart to look for the same digit. I'm breaking apart to make those digits make a 10. What's up, Kate? It is. It ended up being a doubles plus one strategy, or you could make it a doubles plus one. All right, so let's try another one, if I can find out where I put it. Which number is closer to 10? I know, trick question. Grayson? Nine. nine. How far away is a nine from 10? One. So I know that I'm trying to find in my other numbers a one. Does seven have a one inside of it? Yes. Yes. If I know I need a one, what else is my other number going to be when I break apart seven? When I break apart seven and I use a one, what's going to be my other number? William? Six. Six. Very good. Do I have some numbers that I can use to make a ten now? Yes. Yeah. Nine plus one is ten. That's fine. What else is left over? Oh, six. Ten plus six. That's a pretty easy math. you have broken apart the other number? Yes. 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 Remember we talked about this with commutative property of multiplication. We can break apart our other number because addition and multiplication have that fun rule of swipping it, swi switching it. There we go. Not swipping, switching it around. So if I did 7 plus 9 and I broke apart, oops, I broke apart my 9, and I want to make my 7 into a 10. How far away is my 7 from 10? Aiden? 3. So if I'm breaking apart my 9 and part of it is 3, what's going to be my other part? 3. 3 plus 3 does not equal 9. Laney? 3 less than what equals 3. Hang on, I can't hear Laney. What is my missing part? Six. Six plus three is nine. Now I have my numbers to make a ten. Ten plus my leftover six. Sixteen. Yep, this is not doubles. It's a little bit different. Ashlyn, what's up? Figure out which of those numbers you need to break apart to make a 10. Which number did you break apart? Um, I see a lot of you talking to your neighbor instead of staying with me. What number did you break apart, Gio? You broke apart the 8? Okay, I don't think a lot of you did that, but that'll totally work. Lily Marie, what number did you break apart? 8? You broke apart 8? A couple of you did break apart 8. Grayson, what number did you break apart? Four. Four. That's the number I broke apart, and that's what I saw a lot of you.
you break apart. Because 8 is already really close to 10, you don't need a lot to get there. What do you need to get to 10 from 8? Two. Ashlyn? 2. So I know my first part is going to be 2. If I'm breaking apart my 4 and part of it is 2, what's the other part going to be? Not a trick question. Dorian? Please don't call out, Billy. you got to raise your hand. 8 plus 2 is my 10 plus whatever is left over. 10 plus 2. Super easy math, Laney. 12. Alright, these are the three strategies we are going to stop at today. There are plenty more math strategies that we're going to be talking about. Again, this is really simple because we're dealing with just one digit numbers. We will be doing bigger numbers soon, but I need to make sure you can do it with one digit before we move on. Billy, whatever you are doing, please stop. Both of you knock it off. Alright. What I would like you to do now, turn to your math choice board. I need Kylie and Billy at my table. You don't need to bring anything with you. Super short today. Make a plan. Get started. <laughs> 